In this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite two light setup to go from this to this final image with depth. Best of all, we're gonna do it using lights and modifiers you likely already own. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. Let's go ahead and bring the camera right over here and introduce our lovely model, Renee. We will link her up so you guys can give her a follow. Now what we're about to do in the studio is I'm gonna show you my favorite two light setup that I refer to as light stacking. Okay, I don't know if that's a technical term, I just like to call it that. So this is a technique that I've taught in Lighting 3, our advanced lighting course, and it's one that you can use anywhere. And what it does is it builds depth in the photograph by stacking light sources and kind of chiseling out the subject. I'm not gonna talk about it, I'm actually just gonna show you guys. And along the way, I'm gonna transpose the gear that I'm using and what I'm using in terms of modifying to whatever you might have. Let's go ahead and start with camp like we always do, composition, ambient light, modify, then photograph, okay? So let's put this right here for now. Let's grab our camera. Now, I'm using a 35 millimeter Sigma paired with a 5D Mark IV. Now I know what you're thinking, Pi. Why are you using a 35 millimeter to shoot close up portraits? Well, because I sold all of our gear back to the Adorama used camera department so we could trade them all up for the R5s, the R6s and everything. And I'm still waiting for those to come. So this is what I got. This is what we get. So look, let's start with composition first. I'm gonna go ahead and just expose this for ambient light first. Let's take off the remote. I'm gonna be shooting this portrait aspect ratio and then probably not getting too close in terms of distance. All right. So right now we have this light coming from the right side, which is nice. It's a nice natural window light, but the thing is that you might not always have that in whatever scene that you're using, right? So let's go ahead and just take a basic shot right here. And then what we're gonna do is knock out all of that light so you can kind of see us building depth from the ground up, okay? So composition, that's the composition we're gonna go with just so we can get our comparison shots. And now let's dial in ambient light. So here, I'm gonna go up to F4 we're gonna drop the ISO down to low and keep it at one two hundred of a second. We should be able to knock out most of the light. Renee's gonna keep the exact same pose. And there we go. So almost all the light is gone. We have a tiny bit on the leg that's totally fine for the purposes of this tutorial. So we have ambient light dialed in. We know the kind of rough composition that we wanna be shooting with. Now let's go and modify lights. I love the camp framework. I design frameworks like this to make the process of shooting easier for you all. See, when we kind of run into a scene, if I was just to start just setting up lights and start working with multiple things at once, the process gets difficult because we're trying to control too many variables at one time. So the camp framework goes by a step-by-step -step process and now we're gonna modify our light. We're gonna start with our first light. So here I have the Profoto B10, okay? I like using Profoto gear. Many of you guys already know this. I like the reliability. I like the experience of them, but all you need is a flash with a similar power, okay? This is a 250 watt second light. So that's like say a Godox 8200 or whatever you might have that fits your budget. So we're gonna start with this light. I'm gonna go ahead and just get the channel. So let's go ahead and just pop into the menu for a second. It's set to 5E right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go to group. We're gonna set this to A, and let's set this to channel, and we can leave it on channel five actually. That's totally fine. Okay, so this is good. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab an umbrella. This is a large six foot umbrella. I love umbrellas. I feel like these are the most underrated light modifiers. They're incredibly handy. They're very simple to set up. They're inexpensive, they travel well. I mean, we're good to go right now, right? So again, an umbrella is an umbrella is an umbrella. All you need is an umbrella, okay? Pop this on and we're gonna move this to kind of right where the window light is. Okay, I'm gonna pop this on. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and raise this up. Remember, if we want light sources to look natural, we generally wanna mimic how we see them in everyday life, right? Most of the time we see light sources coming top down. So we wanna make sure that we bring those lights up 
and angle them top down. It's a good idea before you do, just to make sure that everything is set up. Make sure that your remote is working and you can trigger it okay. Actually, I have the remote in my pocket. Okay, so right now the remote is set to channel one. So again, this is identical for every type of remote system. All we're gonna do is change the channel five. That was left on group A. We do a test and now it's working, okay? I'm gonna pop this on and now I can go ahead and raise it up to where I want it. I, I find that I, I do this all the time where I raise it up before I have everything set up and I'm like, okay, we gotta lower it back down. So don't worry, if you make that mistake. Here's another mistake I often do. In being lazy, you're supposed to actually raise the top first and then kind of work your way down so that way it doesn't go out of reach. But yeah, I, I did it the other way around, so that's all right. Okay, we are good with this. Let's go ahead and pop a sandbag on. All right, now a couple things to note when you're setting up an umbrella. You want as much distance as you can get from the flash head to the umbrella because that allows the light source to open up. The larger that light source becomes, the more it opens up, the softer the light gets, okay? So don't push the umbrella all the way in because the light's not gonna have distance to kind of open out. All right, so with one light set up, we're gonna take a shot, we're gonna test our power. Let's go ahead, I think it's at set to one right now, right? Which is its lowest power setting. So I'm probably not gonna see anything taking this shot. And yes, I do not see anything. So let's go ahead and power this up. I'm gonna take it up to three, four, five. Let's go up to, I think six now. Take the exact same shot again. Okay, now we're getting better. If I look at the histogram, I can see that the shadows are still really deep. So look at the histogram right here and just look at how dark the overall shadows are. So what I want for this light source is I want this first light to kind of be a fill light for the entire scene. It's gonna kind of just add light to everything in the shot. Now, right now it's set to six. I'm gonna take it up to eight. Now this means that if it's a 250 watt second light and we're shooting at eight, we're using about 50 to 60 watt seconds of power. That's around a regular flash at full power, okay? Let's go ahead and take this shot. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. I think I want to darken it just a smidge, okay? The reason is I want the background just to be a little bit darker than where it is right now. And I'm actually gonna bring my subject forward just a tiny bit. I'm gonna bring this light. The light is actually pretty good right there, maybe a little bit forward. Let's take one more shot and see where we want the power setting to be at. We're super close maybe about half a stop down, okay? Now, again, what I'm deciding right now is essentially where I want the background brightness to be, and I'm deciding where I want the light in terms of the brightness on her body to be because we're gonna light up her face. That's what the second flash is for. So right here, this is nice. You'll notice though, with only one light, the image lacks a little bit of depth, and that's why we're gonna do a second light. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the second light now. So once again, grab any second flash you got. This time it could be something that's a little bit lower in power because we're not gonna power it up all the way. So with this, you can do it however you like. In Lighting 3, I actually taught where we used one light source that had a modifier. The second light actually has no modifier and it's just a direct light. That totally works too if you want a more contrasty look to the image. This go around, we're gonna use a smaller umbrella over this one, okay? Once again, an umbrella is an umbrella is an umbrella. Just grab an umbrella. I'm using the Magmod Hot Shoe right here, or Magmod Cold Shoe. This is one of my favorite light modifiers. Very inexpensive, and uh, it just makes it so easy to kind of adjust and get things in place. So really great handy dandy tool. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. And what we're gonna do with this light, I wanna make sure that it's aimed right at the face, okay? We're gonna move this right in front of the other light. Okay, 
So what's happening now is one light is filling into the entire scene. We're using two shoot through umbrellas. So we're still gonna get light passing through this one, right? The second light is gonna add additional light just to the face and a little bit around the body. So what we're gonna do is get kind of a little bit more depth in the shot, okay? Let's check it out. So with this light, and once again, I broke my own rule of making sure that it's all dialed in. So let's go ahead and switch this. Let's bring this over here just so you guys can see. Okay. Now I believe we had set the other one to channel five and it was A. So we're gonna put this one on five and B. Now let's set this to a low power setting again. I'm gonna set this to two, okay? We're gonna set it right back here. Now let's go ahead and raise and make sure that the angle is right. Tipping it down just a little bit. See right here, it's gonna hit more of the shoulder. I wanna get this up just a bit right there. Okay, I'm gonna bring this light just a little bit forward as well. Perfect. So this is why I call this light stacking because you're essentially stacking one light in front of the other, right? And we start backwards from the light that's behind that's filling the scene and then moving forward to that main light. Now we set that one to two. Okay, so this is probably gonna be a little bit low on the power setting, but we can kind of just gauge it first. And yes, it is a little bit low. So right now we're not quite getting the light chiseling her out, right? So what we're gonna do is on that group B, I'm just gonna go ahead, select B and raise the power a bit. Let's go up two stops first and then give it a shot. Now, once again, when we're thinking about the camp framework, we're working one step at a time, right? So we added one light, got it to how we wanted. Then we modify and add another light, get that one to where we want. We're getting closer now. So I'm gonna go up one additional stop and this should be it right here. Yes. Okay, so we're at five power on the second light. That's very little light that's coming through that umbrella. I'm not gonna go through the numbers. Just know that any flash is totally fine here. But what you'll notice in that shot now, when we compare this shot to the image with just the one light, you can see additional depth in the image. We have this kind of effect where the whole image is lit, but her face is kind of focused in on. So that's what this technique does, is it kind of brings additional light to one specific area. And I love doing this in any scene. Now in Lighting 3, we're doing the exact same technique. I'm just using a slightly different setup, right? So the light behind, that general light for the scene, is being modified by a softbox. The next light is being modified just by a small little mag bounce, a little kind of softening light. So the second light is actually quite a bit more contrasty and more direct than the other one. So it's the same thing though, stacking done on location. Now what we're gonna do is come back to this shoot. Let's go ahead and have Renee move and pose with the light. Because the light's coming from this side, I'm gonna have her keep the chin kind of towards this angle. There we go. I love it. Perfect. And with these lights now set up, I can actually modify it a little bit by just moving Renee's position. So if Renee comes forward a tiny bit and moves this way a tiny, tiny bit, then we can actually modify the position and the light as well. She's gonna get a little bit brighter. I love it. Now let me show you one other tweak to this. If you feel like the shadows are a little bit too deep, this part is super simple. All you gotta do is grab a reflector, grab a V-flat, grab whatever you got to bounce light back in. So this go around, I'm just gonna use a reflector because I have one actually sitting right around here. So let me do that. Okay, so this is just a reflector on a reflector stand. I'm using the silver side. If you want this to be a little more subtle, use the white side. I'm feeling a little lazy right now. I don't wanna open it up and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is actually put this just a little bit further away and then just raise it up a tiny bit. Okay, now you're gonna see the light kind of change a bit as some of the light gets pushed back into the scene. All right, Renee, I love that pose. Bring the chin to the light a little bit. Beautiful. So the shadows open up a little bit and the closer we bring this, the more light we're going to get back. Let's go right there. Do that exact same pose again. I love it. Look at how the shadows kind of open up from this shot to the next. Okay. Again, we can change where those shadows are opening up by the position of the light. 
Notice that reflector is kind of positioned behind her right now. If I position this more to the backside, then what we end up getting is more of a rim fill. If I position this more to the front side, we end up filling a little bit more of the face and kind of the front of her body. Okay, bring the chin over that light right there. Yes. One other thing I wanna point out before I get back to shooting is her outfit. So seeing our backdrop, Renee actually brought an outfit that kind of had similar earth tones, kind of those brown tones as the backdrop. So we had her use that outfit because it kind of creates this harmonious vibe in the color scheme. This color scheme is part of our overall composition. So don't forget that when you're setting up your photographs, color is a huge piece of composition that we often overlook. Let's get back in it. All right, so this lens is giving me a little trouble. It needs to go in for some servicing. Mikey, we are running short on the gear, bro. Good thing we kept some of the basics. Okay, we're shooting at f4. Uh, honestly, this is a great lens for this. We're just gonna use the 2470, and I can actually zoom in now a little bit more. All right, there it is. So take a look at those shots. I, I love those images and how they have a little bit of added depth to them. Use that fill to kind of control how deep you want your shadows. But I love this look. I use this all the time. It's such a versatile setup and it works in any scene, any environment. So that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm actually gonna shoot a few more images. Meantime, I'd love for you guys to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel, give the video a like, Turn on notifications if you actually want to be notified when new videos are posted. And let me know what you think about the shots, the setup, everything below in the comments. I do my best to read them all. I do my best to try to reply them all. I actually do read them all. And then give Renee a follow. We're going to link her up as well. You guys can find me also at Pyjursa on Instagram. Peace. All right. Let's shoot for us now.